Greetings beautiful people. My name is Simon Javan Okelo and I am here in Los Angeles, California with the incredible Naomi Achu, the queen of Bamenda. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm wonderful. I'm so happy to be here with you, Simon, and to be here for Grammy weekend. Excellent, excellent. Thank you all for tuning in for another episode of the Madaraka podcast here on the Madaraka Festival YouTube channel. We are going to talk a little bit about you know the Grammy. Tomorrow is the Grammy and uh, one of the greatest things happening this year at the Grammys is that there are new categories of African genres, awards that have been added to the Grammy that are really really important and Naomi and some of the people I'll be interviewing over the weekend here are some of the people who really really made this happen. Um, how are you feeling right now being at the Grammy by the way? I'm always excited to be around my peers, to be around yeah. other musicians. Um, they give me inspiration. When I see them go for what makes them happy, I go for, I go for mine. So I'm just yeah. happy to be in this space all the time. Yeah, that's incredible. Yes. That's incredible. Um, you know, we originally connected through, through Clubhouse. Yes, yeah, And yes. Uh, we connected in the midst of the pandemic, yes. you know, yes. when... A lot of people are actually uh, not connecting with each other. People are trying to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, be in their own cocoons, yes. you know, within their own safety. Yes. But um, despite the pandemic, you also dropped an album. Yes. Right. Yes. So um, I think we, I just want you to speak about, uh, you know, African Paper. Yes. And yes. why you dropped it during the pandemic. So African Pepper is a 12-track album that came out in 2021. It was a great project. I mean, they're all my babies, but that's, that was the most recent one. And um, I will say I put it out during the pandemic because, of course, I had time. Right. Right? Why not? Right. You know, it's a pandemic. Everybody is in one place or we're not moving around as we, we, we used to. So I was like, let me be creative, let me go to the studio, let me make some music and let me put it out. Even though um, I didn't have a stage or a stadium to do the release um, at, I was able to use online platforms. I was able to go live um, with the album release and perform all the songs or most of the songs um, as a release on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's incredible, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, when I think about your work ethic, how you push yourself, mm -hmm. how you network, you know, I'm, I'm really, really proud of you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, you don't see a lot of Cameroonian women artists, mm -hmm. you don't see a lot of African women artists, you yes. know. And so, uh, I Thank really you. believe that you're doing an incredible job, you know. Thank you. And I feel that a lot of the time when somebody is working that hard, putting themselves out there, it's not, it's not something that they're just beginning. It's not something that mm -hmm. they're, they're starting yesterday, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's something that probably came from their upbringing, you know. Yes. I want you to take us back, you know, take <laughs> us back to, uh, I know a little bit, you know, of, of your background. Yes. I, I know that you come from a very strong family and... Uh, I know that you also recently lost your, your dad, mm -hmm. you know, may his soul mm -hmm. rest in peace. Amen, thank you. And, um, and, you know, just by learning about your loss, I also learned how he was an inspiration to you. Oh, yes, you know? yes, so yes. So speak to that, speak to that, and also mm -hmm. just speak to your work ethic and the discipline that you have and mm -hmm. where it comes from. Okay. Uh, well, you know, I'm the last of six children. And uh, my, my mom is an educator, a teacher. Um, she taught from elementary and up, and she's a fantastic, fantastic teacher. And my dad um, was a diplomat at the um, British, at the Cameroon Embassy in London. And so my first classroom in England was full of people from all over the world. I tell this story all the time. And that was my introduction to being creative. So my, my, my creativity was already colorful because I had friends from um, Sri Lanka, India, 
Uganda and at the same time Greece and Australia. I learned about kangaroos at the age of six, seven. So my upbringing was already col colorful in that light. Um, so that had a lot to do, that has a lot to do with my upbringing and the way I see others and the way I see people and the way I see music too. Um, even though I'm from Bamenda, Cameroon, and I was born in Cameroon, I the way I look at music is I don't think that I have to be um, in one genre. Um, my, my traditional music would be called Mbagalum mm. or Bosu dance. Mm. And it's a beautiful, beautiful sound. But because of my upbringing, inside the country and outside the country, I was able to have a wider perspective of music and creativity. But I, I'm also the last child. And being the last child, I had to find ways to, um, to, to, to find my place on earth, if it makes any sense, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and my dad was the last child too. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, so um, we had, we were more alike than we were different. He was a man of few words. Um, my mom did most of the talking, which I guess it, I guess it worked really well for them. Um, but it, he, he just really was a man of few words. And I learned a lot from him. I learned about loyalty. I learned about um, uh, patience. I learned about perseverance. And I also learned about accountability because my father was the type of person who... Um, took into account his his rights and his wrongs. Mm -hmm. Yes, he, he you know, he we if you if you held him accountable to anything, he would own up to it. And so when you see your father uh, being accountable for his actions, you have no choice but to also look into yourself and say, well, if my dad can be humble enough to um, take take accountability for his goods and his bads, then you know, who am I to not take that into accountability? And that's the way I look, mu I look at music as well. Um, and that's the way I look at life. And that's what would take me into um, wanting to um, having a charitable organization and giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's a, it's a lot of layers, um, a right. lot of layers. Right. Speaking um, about yeah. chari charitable work, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're recently in Ghana, mm -hmm. but I know that even before that, you were in Nigeria sometimes. Yes, yes, I was. Uh, and you, you run a foundation. Yes, yes. Uh, speak about why mm -hmm. and speak about, share with us maybe a story of one of the yes. children that uh, you've, mm -hmm. you've impacted their lives mm -hmm. through the work of your foundation. Oh, okay. Well, so International Nurses for Africa was... Um, built on my nursing license. I was like, hey, I have a nursing license. I didn't what am know I that you have, a, yes. you, you have a nursing background too. Yes, oh, yes, wow. yes. Okay. I, went to, I went to school for nursing. Yeah. Um, I have a nursing license and I was like, what am I going to do to impact the world or to make a change or to, to, to create a positive spark in what I'm doing? So I said, Let's, let me create a foundation called International Nurses for Africa. I could have called it Naomi Achu Foundation. But I said, well, you know what? Um, let me do International Nurses for Africa, and then um, in 20, well, le uh, early last year, um, before that, I would send books and I would send um, funds to Africa, but I wanted to be more hands-on. So I recently started being more hands-on, um, and the experience was just so amazing. Um, going into Nigeria, and carrying those kids and dancing with them and singing with them. I was in the classroom singing along with them and able to really see their facial expressions when we gave them gifts and um, at telling them, to, um, inviting us to come back, saying they wanted to see us again. It just make, you know, it brought out the, the little girl in me, it brought out the little child. And I was like, wow, you know, I am that little girl. I am that I am that girl who was um, studying in a classroom like this, you know. So it it really it it really hits close to home, you know. When I go back, so it, ever since that experience, I've wanted to be at the front line right. of a lot of my projects. Even though I know that um, probably this year and maybe some other years and some some periods, I may not be able to be there physically. But it's nice to I feel like if you're a leader. You know, you have to show your people that 
um, you know, you're, you're, you're more than just somebody who talks. You're somebody who is ready to do the work and roll up your sleeves and then just be there. Right. You know, and people like to see that as well. But um, Ghana, too, was amazing. Um, both projects were very amazing. Um, I had a little child. He was about four years old. Um, I took um, there's this there's this 24 characteristics of genius that um, Bob Duggan has shared with me. And that's uh, he, he, he's trying to share that spread spread that around the world. And I took some of those posters with me to Ghana mm -hmm. and I had uh, when I went to a particular school this is um, trying to remember the school one of the schools I asked for a four-year-old to come out mm -hmm. well actually no I asked I asked random students to come out and read and this I think he was four or five years old came out and um, and read and he read one of the 24 characteristics of genius out loud in the, in in front of like hundreds of children mm. and it just really really touched me and hearing the hearing the children clap for him mm. very empowering I haven't posted that one yet I'm gonna post it but um, you know I, I put everything out there visiting right. the hospitals right. I visited the NICU I saw the babies I gave supplies to mother babies I'm very passionate about about women's women's health mm -hmm. as as a child we gave out sanitary towels Mm -hmm. A thousand, um, uh, yeah, about a thousand sanitary, sanitary packs mm -hmm. to the high school girls there who were taking their exams so that they could stay in school. Mm -hmm. So it's just a lot of things. A lot I love it. Lot. I love mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So I want to bring us back to Los Angeles for a moment. Thank because you. That's where we <laughs> <laughs> you see, you took me on a journey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can go on. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But, you know, I just remember that we're in Los Angeles and this is one of the, this is where America actually, uh, built its narrative yes, this is hollywood yes, yes, you know yes, this, this is, is where the yes. story of america is told yes yes for those who are watching from africa by mm -hmm. the way thank you for joining us for another episode of madaraka podcast here on the madaraka festival youtube channel i'm here with naomi achu who is an incredibly gifted artist award-winning artist originally from cameroon uh, and we've been talking about multiple things but we are here during the eve of the Grammys, and this is the first Grammy where there are new categories added that really honors African music. Mm -hmm. And so I'm speaking to one of the members of the Recording Academy board, and uh, it's just an honor. So to those who are in Africa, who are watching, who yes. have never been to Los Angeles or America, mm -hmm. paint yes. a picture. What's going on around here? So there's artists, musicians from all over the world currently in Los Angeles. People from India. Um, I have my, my, my Indian friend who is nominated. Um, we have, of course, uh, our Grammy nominees from Africa. We have, we just, everybody's here. Everybody wants to get on that red carpet tomorrow and shine and support and hopefully, you know, look forward to their, their turn next year or the year after. Right, yes. right, right. So uh, you've produced how many albums now? I have three albums. Three albums. Yes. Just quickly, take us through the journey of, I know you spoke about Pepper them. Yes. Uh, uh, African Pepper. Yes. But take us through, just quickly, the journey of your first album. Yes. The title. Yes. Uh, maybe a highlight of your favorite music from your first sure. album. And just what inspired it. Yes. And then go to the second one. And then I want you to speak about the, the, the you know, I, I want you to Pepper speak them. about Pepper them. Yes. And then you, Naomi, your self-titled sure, song. Sure, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. I, yes. I gave you so many questions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, my first project is called No Boundaries. It's a four-track EP. Uh -huh. Okay. Then the next one was Positive Energy, 12 tracks. And the next one is Long Live the Queen, 12 tracks. And then the other one, the more recent one is... Um, uh, uh, African Pepper, which is also 12 tracks. Why 12 tracks? Because I had a friend in the industry that always told me, oh, Naomi, your album should have 12 tracks. Um, and it's always stuck with me. It doesn't really have to have, need to have 12 tracks, but it's just, ever since he told me that, it's just mm. been stuck in my head. <laughs> yeah. You know, but um, maybe because of 12 disciples, 12, yeah, I don't know, but 12. Um, and of course, I, have, I had two singles. So last year I put out a single called um, 
uh, what's going on in my head? Uh, waiting on my life. Right. Yes, 2023. Waiting on my life came out with the music video. Did great. Um, I actually was recently uh, nominated um, at Irama for best Afrobeats artist. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 2024. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you so much. And it's uh, happening in 20. Uh, the event is happening in March. So I'll be there with the other nominees, ho hopefully, God willing. Mm -hmm. And then I have a recent song called uh, Naomi. Yes. So uh, I love the video for Naomi, by the way. Thank Where you so was it shot? And why did you title this song Naomi? I, I love it. It's a beautiful song. It wasn't me. Oh. It wasn't me. Oh. So um, Kosi and I met when he came to America for a tour. He's Haitian. No, Kosi is from Cameroon. Oh. Yes, that's the beauty of the song. But why is it that there's an Haitian guy that is really promoting this song, like the day before you release it? Thompson. Thompson. Thompson, yeah. Thompson, yeah. that's my friend. Because, ah. you know, friends support friends. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So for Thompson. a moment I was like, is he the, the guy yeah. featured on the song? Yeah, I still have to. Thompson, Thompson and I are working yeah. on, another, on a project. Okay. Yes, him Shout being Haitian him, and yeah. me being Cameroonian, mm -hmm. I'm very excited. Um, to do something with him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is Kosi. Kosi is from Cameroon. He's okay. also from Bamenda. Ah. Yes. And um, he, he, he was doing a tour. So this is what happened. You know, we, 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 we were playing with some styles, how the music is going to sound, because he sings and he raps, and I also sing and I rap. So mm -hmm. we weren't really sure how it was going to start. But then, right. you know, we played some beats, we met, were messing around with some sounds, and we found something that worked. He got in the studio, and then he went in the booth, and he was like, Hey, Naomi, show me your dating way, ya, na, 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 na. That's what happened. Yeah. And then he did the hook, and then he said, Naomi. So that was all him. He didn't yeah. tell me what he was going to do. He just, but I just stood in my student. I would just stood outside of the, of the booth and I was just like, okay, okay. Yeah, I'll go with it. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So, um, but it was a very, uh, Kosi has been one of my easiest collaborations. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it was such a smooth, um, I understand him. I understood him. Yeah. He understood me. And I really enjoyed uh, working with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the songs that bring a different character in who you are is The King. Yes, yes. Speak yes. about just the development of that song and, yes. and also just the impact it has had, uh, you know, in your, in your career. Because I feel like it's one of the songs that when you go on stage yes. and perform it, people really see like the... the, the, the yes. The... the, 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 the how do I call it? The lioness in you. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I yeah. wrote I wrote King um, as if I was writing a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Some of my songs I write like I'm writing a movie. I'm like, yeah. how should a movie soundtrack sound like? Yeah. And it's very interesting because a lot of people, when they hear that song, they're like, why, is, why isn't this in a movie? This has to be in a movie. Because right. in my mind, my imagination was all about movie right. um, and so when I perform that song I try to be dramatic and energy I mean you're right you're talking about a king yeah. and then you're talking about a lion in the jungle roaring right. so you can't just sit down and play Miss Daisy no and then I'm talking about an eagle um, in the sky you, you 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 can't play that safe right. yeah so right. um, that's I think the lyrics of that song makes me um it makes me turn into like you said a lioness an eagle because i have to portray what what what's written right i yeah. love that i love thank that you. Mm -hmm. um again thank you so much for all your love and support for me mm -hmm. uh you know with madaraka festival yes. 2022 you know against all odds, mm -hmm. you know, you, you are able to make it to Seattle. We didn't even know each other very well at that time. Oh, you know? yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, of Why course. Why did you trust me and show up for me like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can ask you the same thing. Why did yeah. you trust me and show up for yeah. me like that? So yeah. I think, um, first of all, I appreciate what you stand for. Yeah. You know, um, an African father in, uh, in America. Um, I appreciate family values. I also appreciate the fact that you look at Africa as a whole. Yeah. When you look at Africa, you see all 54 countries. Yeah. 
not everybody sees all 54 countries, mm -hmm. but you see them all. And that's important. You see Africa as Africa. You see, and you see all the different colors of South of Africa. You see purple, white, green, brown. And that's why um, I gravitate towards Madaraka Festival. And that's why I gravitate towards you because you have a very big picture. Yes, your your vision of Africa is wide. Mm -hmm. It's bigger than mm -hmm. a lot of others. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So 2022, you saw what we did, and then yes. you saw what we did in 2023. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about 2023? Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. I love yeah. the pictures, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Yeah. Um, I loved how you went from place to place. Yeah. Um, I love the energy from the audience, from the from um. From, yeah, I love the energy from uh, the band. Yeah. Yes, I saw some of my friends on stage. I yeah. saw DJ Freddie Mooks. I yeah. saw, I don't know if Cheeky Cheesy was there, but Cheeky, Cheeky I don't Cheesy, know. Yeah, um, Cheeky Cheesy, yeah, yeah, yeah. May have passed by, um, but yeah, I saw. He passed by the show in LA for sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, so it just, just it, it was more than a show. It was family. It was family. Yes, yeah. and I, yeah. I, I noticed that's how you build your, that's how you build Madaraka Festival. You build it as a festival, but you build it as family. Yeah. And before we had this interview, we were talking about some of your Madaraka people that are here yeah. for the Grammys yeah. and are attending it tomorrow. So, yeah. And we're all hanging together like a family. Why? Because of Madaraka Festival. It's incredible. You know, yes. even, even me, I'm just realizing how many of the Madaraka people are. Yes. Are at the Grammys. Yes. It's actually almost 30 people. Yes. The, I, I posted, well, it's almost like we're just having a side conversation. Yes. But I posted on social media mm -hmm. when we got to LA that, yes. hey, I'm in LA, tag someone in LA that I should connect with, you know? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and I started getting phone calls and text messages and I was like, oh, 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 yes. I, you know? So it's just beautiful to, mm -hmm. to, to have a sense yes. of, of of the the effort that we are making oh, yes. and to know that you know uh, yeah, to feel like you know year. i'm not alone and we are not alone in this entire oh, yes. process yeah. Yes. yeah and it's yeah. such a big year for africa yeah yes and yeah. madaraka definitely has a very big part to play in it so we are very ambitious this year it's our 10 year anniversary yes. and yes. i think you know you know a lot of the plants that mm -hmm. um we have, yes. you know, we want to do, you know, a series of Madaraka festivals in 13 cities in mm -hmm. May and June. Yes. And then hopefully another 13 cities in August, July, August mm -hmm. and October, November, something similar. Yes. Um, exciting. What, oh, that's, I wanted to ask you <laughs> what comes to your mind when you hear all this. Very exciting. It's so ambitious. Mm -hmm. um, and I thank you for introducing me to people. Not many artists go the extra mile. Many artists actually just want to come, yes. get paid, and do their job and, and do leave. Their job. You know. Yes, yes. But I feel like you're one of those people that really go further than that. Mm -hmm. And I really mm -hmm, mm -hmm. appreciate you doing that, opening mm -hmm. your networks for me, mm -hmm. and really helping me succeed. You know. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's all about community. Yeah. Yes. We, yeah. you know, we 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 build community. Part of being queen of Bamenda or empress or whatever you call it is about building a community. Yeah. It's more than making music. Yeah. Yes, it's more, it's, it's, it's living the life. You put out music, but then you also, you know, create places where people can eat and who can in turn feed you, right. you know, or feed your children. Right. Right? right. So I want to be in a place where people can feed my children if I can't. Right. You know, and I want, I want to be in a place where I can feed other people's children if they can't. Right. That's all about building a community, and that's how we grow together. I love that. Yes. One of the things I'm asking all my guests for the Madaraka podcast is mm -hmm. to share with my audiences three tips when it mm -hmm. comes to event production. Because as yes. an artist, just last year alone, I saw you performing at so many events, you mm -hmm. know. So you know yes. what a successful event requires. Yes. And people have been asking me, you know, mm -hmm. uh, show me how you're doing what you do. And yes. for me, I feel like what I do, a lot of people that I talk to also know. Mm -hmm. And they've experienced it, you know. Yes, and yes. there's no better person to talk about events than an artist, you know. Of course, Because yes, if yes. an event is 
terrible then an artist does not want to be a part of that's it that's true you know that's true so as we get closer to our the end of our conversation mm-hmm. i just want you to share three tips yes, you know yes, yes. to someone who is probably struggling uh and uh figuring trying to figure out how do i succeed in producing my own madaraka festival yes yes yeah. yes i would say definitely um build a network yeah. yes having a strong network is important but you also have to you have to show up for others that's how you build your network um yeah. Yeah, show up for others so that they can show up for you and um be of um how can I say it? be be of value, add value into rooms that you go to either help out or um ask for advice and take that advice and you know share it with others. So be of value, be of help, be helpful. That's one. Um number two, um as far as, you know, stage preparation, um I think a solid mic is very important. Mm. I see um a lot of um sound engineers or DJs um struggle with um a decent mic to perform with. Mm-hmm. So um I would say invest in a solid microphone. It's so important um, though as yes. an, as a vocalist. Yes. If the mic is terrible, Yes. and you're yelling you can't hear yourself the mic is actually reminding me of a mon- the monitors because yes. if the mic is good and there's no monitor you can't hear yes. yourself yes. anyway keep going yes yeah, so the mic and there has to be a good marriage between the monitors and the yeah. rest of the equipment equipment yeah. that you are using it makes yeah. such a difference especially yeah. when people come far and wide to hear you perform yeah. they want the best of it mm-hmm. you know so i would say a solid mic and as a female entertainer number 3 I would say um and this is to those this is once you have your show and you're ready to book female entertainers I've heard um some some promoters or some producers say well women are difficult they're more difficult and you know it's difficult to have women yeah so cuz you know we need makeup we need outfits we need but I don't think that women are difficult I say to the to the um to the producers of the show that are bringing women on just have somebody pay attention to the specifics um and I think if at the beginning uh, the female artist has those specifics she tends to relax and she's more at ease because with women we're all about our appearance you know whether it's our fashion or you know it, it whatever it is we all about how how we we portray ourselves in public even more so than men mm-hmm. but once you have that um taken care of or once you you have made her feel comfortable she is able to probably perform even better than all the men that you have on the lineup 100% mm-hmm. 100% now we thank you okay. what are your closing remarks as we wrap up our conversation today <laughs> Um, I say to my musicians out there um keep doing what you do get in that studio make those hits to the people that are here collecting their grammys collect them for us we are proud of you and for those who are hoping to get grammys keep grinding your grammy is coming madaraka festival 2024 2025 2026 let's go thank you thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for tuning in to the madaraka festival YouTube channel here for the Madaraka podcast my guest has been uh, Naomi Achu the queen of Bamenda we covered so many topics you have to watch this from the beginning in order for you to really really enjoy it uh thank you remember to subscribe to the channel peace